We're making fried chicken today. Call me Michael Jordan because I'm about to dunk on this fried chicken. Wow, I've never felt overweight. Okay, so like I said before, we're making fried chicken today. We're gonna be starting with some nice chicken thighs, obviously. Need some cornstarch, flour, breadcrumbs, salt. I've got nine herbs and spices here, plus salt is a spice, so that's 10, and then the 11th herb and spice is love, my heart. Actually, it's not, I don't know what it is. We have some pickles here, and then buttermilk, and then in this fryer that we've already got going, uh, it's preheated to 350 degrees, we've got some peanut oil. So, fryer's already preheated, we've got our chicken out, I'm gonna break this down a little bit. What we're mainly gonna be trying to do here is trim off some of this excess fat because we do want some fat from the chicken, but we don't want a ton of just extra fat flying around because that's gonna just kinda, it's gonna give you a really gross bite if you've got a weird strand of fried fat from there. So we give this a nice trim. <coughs> Breaking down any kind of like excess excess uh, fatty bits that you see. So like right here, that's a good fatty bit. It's a little bit excess, we're gonna trim that off. Please be careful when you're doing this, don't cut yourself. So we've got that one nice and clean down a little bit. I've got this little, little piece of chicken right here that's kind of not wanting to fit in with the rest of the equation, so I'm gonna go ahead and chop that off too. Because we're breaking these down, turn them into manageable, manageable sizes. Um, just so they're a little bit easier to fry. And if you were wanting to do a fried chicken sandwich situation too, this would work great for that too. So here we've got another big piece of fat I'm gonna trim off. Trying my best to avoid cutting off a bunch of chicken and mainly just trying to cut off the fat. Just stretch it out a little bit. Like here, we've got a nice big chunk. I'm gonna trim that off. And then right here on the side, this is some of the stuff we really want to get off. I'm going to cut right through that. Getting that nice and trimmed up. And we've still got some little fatty bits here and there, but we want that so it has a little bit more flavor. But we've got most of the excess unnecessary bits trimmed off. So I'm going to throw these away, then we're going to get to what we're doing next. Okay, so what we're going to be doing next, I've got a bowl here. We're going to take some of our pickles, we're gonna take some of that pickle juice and pour it out. What we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be making a brine for our chicken to hang out in for a while. And pour some pickle juice in there. And then we're gonna add some buttermilk to that too. Uh, you hear that popping, that's just the fryer going, getting nice and preheated. But we're gonna pop some buttermilk in there, in this bowl. I'm gonna dump the whole thing in there just because it's a small batch. And then we're just gonna gently lay our chicken down in this, give it a nice little stir. Lay the chicken down. And you're gonna let that hang out in the fridge. Um, you can do this from anywhere from 24 hours to two hours. Uh, I'd say a good roll of thumb is at least, at least 30 minutes if you can. But I prefer if you grind it for about two hours, it's gonna give it a nice kind of rich flavor with an undertone of that kind of acidity from the pickle. It's how Chick-fil-A does theirs, so it's how we're doing ours. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge and we're gonna get work on everything else now. Okay, so while we wait on our chicken to brine, we're gonna go ahead and get our dredging station set up here. I've got two containers, doesn't matter what size or shape, just as long as they're big enough to fit your chicken. In the first one, I'm gonna put some flour and some of our cornstarch. I'm gonna be putting about a cup of flour in the first one. One thing to make sure you always do whenever you're uh, measuring something like flour, and make sure that you measure it from the top so you don't just like dump some flour in there. I always like to I always like to take it, get a scoop and then drag it along the side and press 
so I get a nice flat top and I know I have exactly the amount I want to have in here. So we've got some flour in there and then I'm going to take a little bit of the cornstarch. This one I'm just going to measure with my heart a little bit more. That seems about right. That cornstarch is going to add to the nice kind of crispy texture that we're looking for with this chicken. I'm going to get all that mixed up in there. Next thing I'm gonna do is in a separate one, I'm gonna add some breadcrumbs. Now normally you would think, well, why don't you add the breadcrumbs to the flour and the corn starch? It's because we're gonna be doing kind of like a double dredge situation here. So we're gonna drop the chicken once into the flour corn starch mixture, and the second time we're gonna drop it into the breadcrumbs. That's gonna help create that nice kind of beautiful crispy texture that we're looking for that everybody loves in fast food fried chicken. That aside, now comes our 11 herbs and spices. We're gonna be dropping that into both of these just so we make sure we get flavor everywhere. But first, we're gonna start out with some garlic powder. And again, season heavily with this. Like, it's as much as you want it to be. We're gonna be using some mustard powder here now. have some basil some rosemary now we're gonna throw in some oregano as you can hear our biggest fan has decided to show up hopefully he stops talking here in a minute so that's a lot of oregano in the break comes but that's fine we'll be throwing in some paprika um, it's not making your chicken spicy, it's just adding a nice little pop of color. Uh, paprika really doesn't have any spice in it. Uh, it adds a little bit of flavor. The paprika is more of just an aesthetic ingredient. We're gonna be adding some white pepper as opposed to black pepper. Uh, white pepper is a really common flavor that you associate with a lot of fast food restaurants like uh, Panda Express, KFC, uh, McDonald's uses it a lot. So we're gonna be adding some white pepper in there. We're gonna add some sage. It's not one up. And then the last thing that we're gonna add from these nine herbs and spices is some onion powder. And the last thing we're going to add, of course, is going to be some salt. Now, I'm not adding any black pepper in here because we already have the white pepper, but if you want to throw in some black pepper, feel more than free to. Uh, it does pair nicely with a white pepper, but that's just not how I'm doing it today. So we've got everything in here. We're going to give this a nice mix up. Make sure all the spices are incorporated evenly throughout our dredges. That's where a lot of our flavor is going to be coming in. So, in most traditional recipes, you would season the actual protein. So, like you would put the salt onto the steak or salt and pepper onto the chicken. But because of the way we're doing this, our dredge needs to be very well seasoned because that's where a lot of our flavor is going to be coming from since we're doing a buttermilk pineapple juice situation on the actual chicken itself. So get everything nice and really mixed up in there. You still see little bits of some of the spices in there. That's nice. That's what we want. Shake these out. And now we're gonna get ready for our chicken to come out. Okay, so had our pickle sitting in this marinade dredge situation for about an hour or so now. So we're gonna take it out. We're gonna start breading it up, getting ready for frying. Our oil is in a nice red hot 350 degrees. You can smell it just by taking off the lid. So what we're gonna do first is we're gonna take 
first piece of chicken out, I'm gonna drop it right into the flour and cornstarch mixture. The way I like to work when we're frying things is have a wet hand and a dry hand. So because I just use this hand to pick the pick, so because I just use this hand to pick the chicken out of our buttermilk pickle juice situation, this is gonna be my wet hand. So now we're at a dry stage, so I'm gonna use my dry hand. Get everything nice and floured up. You can make sure the flour gets all over everything. Sticks on there nice and good. We're gonna drop that back in our buttermilk. Pull it out. And drop that in our breadcrumbs. Get everything nice and situated on there. So we got breadcrumbs nice and coated all over, as you can see. We're just gonna drop that right in our oil and it should sizzle as you drop it in. And we're gonna do that with the next piece too. So we're gonna be letting this chicken go at 350 for about six to eight minutes. Uh, we wanna get a nice golden brown. Uh, Frying chicken is pretty easy since it's a heat all over. It cooks a little bit more evenly throughout, but it can become tough very quickly if you're not careful. And as you can see, I've given up on my wet hand, dry hand situation. That's usually how it does end up going when I start frying stuff. Into the breadcrumbs. into the fryer. So one thing that you will notice here is that I'm using a big kind of fryer hot plate situation. You can do this with a simple pot and oil. Just keep a thermometer on there and keep checking it. I'm using this just because I have it, so I'm gonna use it. But you can still do this on a stove top with a pot and some oil. So we're gonna wait about eight minutes on this chicken to fry and then we'll get back to you guys. Okay, so it's been about seven minutes or so. Our chicken is nice and golden brown, so we're gonna take it out, put it on those paper plates so some of that oil can dry off. And look at that. That's a beautiful, beautiful golden brown. Broke the crust on this one a little bit, but that's fine. Let that oil cool off. You got some nice crust over that. Let's, let's give it a nice little crispiness crust. Getting close, getting close. Oh, you hear how crispy that is? Oh, that's amazing. This chicken's gonna be great. So, we're gonna let this cool off a little bit. So, we're gonna let this cool off a little bit, pat some of the oil down, and then we're gonna plate this and it's time for a taste test. And we have a special taste test for today. All right, so here we have our fried chicken, and now we're gonna call our special guest. He's a little shy, so I need all the crew to wake him up, okay? So on three, we're all gonna say, Dakota Goblin, wake up, okay? On three. One, two, three. Dakota, Dakota Goblin, Goblin, wake up! Is he coming? Oh, he's coming, he's coming. Come on, come on, I have some, I have some chicken for you. Hey Dakota, how you doing bud? I got chicken for you, you wanna try it? And here you go, I got a fork and a knife for you, try it. Hey, 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 you, you, you just use your hands actually, you know what, just use your hands. Oh, you got taller. Is it really good? You can take that with you. We have none. Thank you, Dakota. Hey, look, it's like I just got that. Did you let him out of his hole? Maybe. Why'd you do that? He's only. Oh, great. You gave him food? Yeah. He was already fed earlier this morning. Well, I wanted to do something special for him. He's been oh, good this oh, week. Oh, no. Oh, 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 oh. We got a cut. Oh, 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 oh,
Uh, I'm gonna try some of this. But because I have crew that wants to try it, I'm gonna be civilized and cut off a piece. Oh, you can hear that nice, beautiful crunch. It sounds amazing. Ooh, hot. Mm. Okay, so don't be like me and take it too big of a bite. Um, but it's really good though. It tastes just like any fast food chicken you get anywhere. It's probably a little bit healthier for you too, actually. This is great. It's a great weeknight meal. It's a great meal if you have a lot of people coming up or you have like a Super Bowl party or a national championship party that you need to cook for. You know, roll tide, baby. Uh, it's a great meal. You guys should totally make this. Thank you for coming to this week's episode of Cooking in College. Remember, like the video, subscribe to our channel, make sure you hit the little notification bell so you know when we post new episodes of things that we have coming up. We got a lot of really fun stuff coming up that you do not want to miss. Remember, comment what you want to see next. If you want to see the hot pepper challenge, comment you want to see the hot pepper challenge. We'll see you guys next week on Cooking in College. Thank you. Oh, boop, boop. You okay? Oh, boop, boop. Okay. Mm, oh, no, he's Oh, no, he's speaking oh, no. <laughs> We gotta. This is what happens when you feed the goblin <laughs> bad things. Okay.